Okay. So yesterday we started finding area of um, a region enclosed between two curves, right? Um, and what we talked about was we have a higher function or a greater function which sits higher, right, vertically, and then a smaller function which sits lower vertically. And we said the area was just the integral of the difference of the functions, right? But we didn't really talk about, you know, what that meant. Like, what's the meaning behind it all, right? Well, let's talk a little bit about that now. Um, how did we start this whole business on integrals and area? How did we start way back when, before we even did an integral, how did we find area under a curve? Do you remember how we used to draw rectangles, right? And we did RM, LRM, MRAM. Do you remember? That's how we started. So um, like I always tell my students, you know, when you're doing calculus, never forget the little people who got you where you are today, right? And who got us where we are today? It was those little tiny rectangles that we drew, right? And so let's just go back to the basics and see what exactly it is that we were doing there. What we were doing is, you know, drawing tiny little rectangles like this, right? Finding the area of each one and then adding them up. So now, if I take a representative rectangle here, okay, the area of that rectangle is base times height, right? So here we have base and here we have height. Okay, so the base is delta x and the height, right, is f of x minus g of x, right? That's what the height is. So now if I, if, so one, area is f of x minus g of x times delta x. And now if I want to add up all of those, then if delta x is super, super tiny, it becomes dx. So now the area of one rectangle is f of x minus g of x dx. And then if I add them all up, that's the integral. That's what I just did. Okay. All right. What I also wanted you guys to be careful of was um, that look at the rectangles that I've drawn here. Every single one, what just happened here? Every single one of the rectangles, oh my gosh, function on top as it does on the bottom, right? So whether the rectangle is here, 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 the, the same function is on top, and then the same function is on the bottom. But then when we got to this point, right, what happened? You notice if I draw a rectangular strip here, right, and then if I draw another rectangular strip here, they don't have the same function on top and the same function on the bottom, right? because the function changes right about here. Yes? So now what we did to get around that was we split it up and we did two integrals. But maybe there is another way. Maybe you don't have to draw the rectangles that way. Maybe if I draw the rectangles another way, if I draw my rectangles this way, right? What happens there? Do you see how they have the same function on the left and the right all the time, right? So maybe that's another way of doing the same integral. And we call that integrating with respect to y, okay? So take a look at this over here. I have a function this way, and notice if I drew representative rectangles like this, every single rectangle is bounded by the same function on the right, and every single one of them is bounded by the same function on the left. So that means, okay, if I have to do subtracting of functions, I don't have to do them vertically, I can also do them horizontally. But what happens when I do that 
is all my functions have to be solved so that they're in terms of y, okay? So for example, if I have y equals root x, I need to solve it for x, x equals y squared, right? And then my functions are in terms of y and I would integrate that, okay? What's more, okay, now, remember how before we did the higher function minus the lower function, so we did upper minus lower? Now, which one's the greater function? The greater function is the one on the right. So now I do right minus left. And because all my variables now are y's, I integrate with respect to y. And what's more is these boundaries are now also the y values. So they go from y equals c to y equals d. Okay, so I go from c to d. All right? So what we're going to do now is, remember that problem that we did yesterday? We're going to do it again. But this time, we're going to do it with respect to y, okay? Because here, when I draw my rectangles this way, every single one of them have the same function on the left and the same function on the right, okay? So here is what we do. What were the functions here? My functions were Can you just move y yeah huh thank you i didn't finish like writing the top part can you just move it up a little like keep going just okay. so i can see the top part sure thank so look at what my functions are here i have y equals root x i solve that for x and i get x equals y squared here i have y equals x minus 2 so x equals y plus 2 so now when I integrate, right, to find the area, I do the right function first, y plus 2, minus the left side function, y squared, dy. Okay? And yesterday I took a lot of care telling you that if it's x, 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 these numbers on the integrals have to be x values. Well, now... Because these are all y, y, dy, these values on the integral have to be y equals 0 to y equals 2. Okay? Do we, write, do we have to write the y equals? No, you just do 0 to 2. Okay? All right. After that, we're going to put it into the calculator and we're going to get 3.333. While you're um, writing that down, actually, on your homework, you don't have to integrate by hand. Just show me the integral with the correct bounds, and then you can integrate with the calculator, okay? What I, again, common mistakes are students will forget the dy or put dx if it's supposed to be y. They'll, you know, the limits, I'm looking for the correct limits. I'm looking for this to be correct, and I'm looking for that to be correct. Okay? Um, Ms. Malikin? Yeah. Wait, can you just explain why it's 0 to 2 again instead of 0 to 4? Yes, because now that everything's in terms of y, we look at the y-intercepts of the, you know, of the region. So the region is this, right? The lowest y-value for the region is y equals 0, and the highest y-value for the region is y equals 2. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, let's do that. The one last one. So here is the region we need to graph, right? Be in between y equals x cubed and the other function. So this is the region, right? Notice here, if I look at this vertically, right? If my rectangles are vertical, there is a change in boundaries right here, right? But look. But if I highlight the region in another color, 
if I do my rectangular strips horizontally, then everywhere in the region, the rectangles have the same function on the right and the same function on the left, right? So this is a prime example for integrating with respect to y. Okay, so I love this stuff so much. Like I really do, like it's so much fun for me to do all of this stuff. Okay, so look at the functions here. I have um, y equals x cubed, that's this blue one, right? Always label your functions. And if I'm gonna do this with respect to y, I have to solve it for x. So x is cube root of y. The red function is a sideways parabola, y squared minus two. So if x is y squared minus two, that's already solved for x, I can just use it as is. Okay, now, what's the area gonna look like? It's the function to the right, cube root of y, minus the function to the left, y squared minus two, dy. Okay. What is the, what are the points of intersection for this? It's here, y equals negative one, and here, but I don't know the y value of that one. So I need to use my calculator for that one, okay? So I'm gonna put these two functions in my calculator. Um, I'm gonna put in y equals x cubed, and then this one I'm gonna solve for y. I'll show you guys um, a few weeks later how to do relations and stuff too. So this is y equals plus or minus root x plus two. Okay, so let's plug all that in the calculator. Um, I'm going to put in y equals x cubed, so x to the power of three, and also, um, I'm just going to do the square root of x plus 2. I don't have to do the bottom one because I just need that intersection right there, okay? So now I go to menu, analyze graph, intersection. All right, that's my intersection. I'm going to move it here, okay? I'm interested in the y coordinate this time. So I take my cursor. I hover on the Y coordinate and click, and you should see that. Then I do control variable. I'm gonna call that C, just because it's convention to call the Y value C. Is it wrong if you call it A? No, you could call it happy face if you want. Just define it, okay? So that's C. Now, all this is meaningless if on your paper you don't write what your uh, variable equals. So you have to say let c equal 1.793. So now my integral, right, okay. is yes, again from... control. Control variable. The, What's uh, the button? You said control. It's the button right above the nine. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, I see my it. integral is going to go from negative 1 to C. So now I go home. Well, I mean, I don't go home. I go to my home screen. <laughs> and I'm going to put in the integral, right? So integral here. It's going to go from negative 1 tab to C, right? It has to be bold if you defined it properly. Tab, cube root of Y. Um, I just do x, the, the calculator doesn't know the difference, x to the power of one-third minus, in parentheses, x squared minus 2, close all the parentheses, tab, dx, enter, oh, no, oh, sorry. I didn't do minus here. You see what happened? Ah, you gotta be careful. I did um, negative instead of minus. That's how it should look. Ms. Malikian? Yep. Um, so you can do X or Y for that? Yeah, 
You can, because the calculator doesn't know the difference. It just says, it just knows variable squared minus variables. You know what I mean? The calculator doesn't know what you're doing. You know, the integration is the same regardless of the variable. So yeah, you can do that. And now that's the correct answer. So it's 4.215. So area is 4.215. Okay. Do we have to do like units squared or do we just